Hey everybody, Jake here from Bearded Gear, and I'm finally ready to do my full review on the Mini Freak. This is not the normal Mini Freak. It is the Mini Freak Dash 1, as I call it, because it's carbon fiber, handle scales, solid carbon, through and through, and S90V blade steel. This one particularly is one of the first production models. I bought this as soon as I saw River's Edge Cutlery posted them for sale, which they also happened to be the first shop that I saw posted them for sale. And with how much I have loved the Super Freak lately, I just knew I needed to at least give this knife a shot. And I'm really glad that I did, like really glad. This knife has been a joy to carry. I've been carrying it as a secondary in my back left pocket. My primary goes in my front right pocket. And as a secondary knife with the size, profile, weight, it's perfect for that role. It's genuinely, so good. I did a secondary carry knives video not too long ago, just about my secondary carry knives, which reminds me I need to do one about primary carry knives. But this was so close to being in my top three. It really came down between this and the Native 5 uh, fluted carbon fiber S90V that I have for that spot in the top three, because they're both so similar. And I ended up picking that one because I do think that knife carries just the tiniest bit more comfortably, but it's really close. And I don't even think necessarily that I like that knife more than this knife, especially the more I've had this in pocket. It's like, it's so close. So let's talk about this knife a little bit and the materials, the design. Sorry, I'm not far off the road as you can hear. The materials, the design, how it all came together. Like I said, I got this because I fell in love with the Super Freak. The Super Freak is G10 and M4, and it's bigger. <laughs> so this is a scaled down, smaller version of the knife, but we've got solid carbon fiber scales, which I don't know if you can see, if it really comes through how nice this carbon is, but I really like this carbon fiber. The way that it's finished with this matte kind of dry finish, it it's great for traction, but it also just looks really nice. I dig the aesthetics of this carbon a lot. I also love it. I don't know if it'll show on camera, but when you can see on the side of a knife, the kind of cross cut pattern, like where the, the waves of the carbon go through, I just think it looks awesome. And this through and through looks like really high quality carbon fiber. The way they've machined it, the way the weave comes through from any angle, even looking internally, you can see the awesome cross pattern. It's just really excellent carbon fiber, really well done. Um, let's move on with construction, I guess. So the carbon is great. No, before I move on, the shaping of this carbon, because I heard before some people got this and people who saw it just in pictures, a lot of people were skeptical about the way they do these cuts here, which frankly is like the same style of cut that they put on the Super Freak. And I don't mind it there either. Here, I actually really like these, these milled sections where they've cut just a little bit out. It gives the knife kind of a rounder feel. The scales are also rounded all the way around. They are just barely contoured. So it's not just a flat sheet and then they cut those out. There's some rounding here on the actual like flat of the handle as well. So it's this really nice contoured carbon and then you get these cuts here and it just in hand to me, it gives it a great indexing and it's not uncomfortable at all for my hand. On that same note, the edges of the carbon everywhere are very smooth. The spots where they're least smooth are where those cuts are. It's more of a abrupt angle where it's cut there, but it is still, the edge is knocked down, it's chamfered, it's smoothed off, it's sanded well. It feels really smooth to the touch to me. There's no hot spot on this knife anywhere. The hottest spot on this knife is the mini deep carry clip, which I added to it. And that's not even bad at all. I just feel it more than I did the regular split arrow clip or whatever they call it. So. The handle scales are just done really well. I love the profile. I like the shape. I like that it's a neutral enough shape that I, it's comfortable in any grip that I put it in. It, it's not shaped so much that it's curving in one way and then it's awkward and reverse or draw or any of those other grips, but it's really, it also locks me in enough. <laughs> 
these scales aren't textured. They just have a natural dry carbon, like not slickness to them, but they're not grippy either. But the shaping of this primary, this finger groove here, and then the little swell out to the back, just like on the Super Freak, it just locks my hand in really, really well. And a hammer grip, I don't feel like this is going anywhere. Saber grip doesn't feel like it's going anywhere. Reverse grip doesn't feel like it's going anywhere. And it's really comfortable for my thumb back here. Reverse draw doesn't feel like it's going anywhere. Nice and comfortable. Forward grip draw cut doesn't feel like it's going anywhere. Nice and comfortable. Like it just works for me really, really well. I wear medium sized gloves, although I fill them out well. Not nah, mean. And <laughs> for me, it's a great, great, great size and shape. I literally, my fourth finger rests perfectly on the edge where it just starts to slope down. It's just barely on the inside of that. So I don't feel that corner or anything there. It's just right where I want it to be. In a saber grip, same thing. Like it, it also, in a saber grip, puts the butt of the knife kind of into my palm in a nice way, where I feel like if I'm thrusting, like stabbing the knife into material, it's locked in. It can't slip, my hand can't slip forward onto the knife because the butt is going right into my palm. It's great. I just really, really like it. The ergos aren't quite as comfortable as the super freak for me because the super freak has just more room for my hand to feel like it's got space this i'm i'm really locked into that one spot um but for a secondary for the size of this knife it's really comfortable for its size and for its weight and for its dimensions like it just it works really well for me one thing i'll say that i kind of expected was that this knife would be a little bit thinner this way but I'm not mad at it. <laughs> I I think I would like it if it was shaved down just a little bit because I carry it as a secondary. It's not that it feels too big in my pocket, but it feels chunkier than knives like my uh, Native 5. It, granted, that's a back lock, it's a Spyderco. I think that blade stock, oh, they might actually be about the same, but this just feels a little thicker than it needs to be for a small knife, although, I just raved about the Ergos. So for all I know, making it a little bit thinner might have made it less comfortable, and then it could have been an ergonomic loss, whereas right now it's an ergonomic win for me. So it's it, again, it's not chunky. It just doesn't feel like everything else about this knife feels smaller than the thickness does, if that's a sentence that makes any sense. Everything about this knife feels compact, but then it feels kind of full thickness. Maybe that's the way I should say it. I don't know. English is hard sometimes. So anyways, I love the handle. I really dig it. I do wish it was maybe a little bit thinner, but it, it at the end of the day doesn't bother me. I've carried this knife like crazy. It is so comfortable in pocket. I will say, in my opinion, this knife should come with a mini deep carry clip. I don't know why it doesn't. I feel like this design in my head doesn't make any sense that they have this clip and the other clip that they do use and they think yeah let's put that split arrow clip on here for a small little compact knife like this it this just makes way more sense to me as a clip this one it's still wearing my bug out clip which is the gray one from the ranger green bug out because it has the it matches like the gray blade and i think i'm going to leave this one on here because i i like it a little better than a full black clip just the way that it goes with the carbon i dig it i may change it eventually i've got black ones now too but i like it like this so with that clip the carry is excellent the thickness of this in pocket it's actually fairly slim it's I'd have to put it side by side with the 940 that I'm borrowing right now. I should do that. But it feels about the same in thickness this way, like tallness, I guess you would call it, as a 940 does, which is a very slim profile. So I like it. It's kind of like a chopped down 940 in the way that it carries. Like it just got shorter, but it's still that kind of thin profile. It's nice and lightweight. Yeah. So let's talk about the blade a little bit. This one is S90V. S90V is a blade steel that I quite like. I really enjoy S90V. It is towards the top of the charts for edge retention out of steels that are available right now. Benchmade seems to treat their S90V well. They use it on quite a few applications and usually they use it on the nicer versions of things like the ones that get carbon fiber, just like this one. So it it's ground 
really well. It's nice and thin down by the edge. It's not the sliciest knife that I own, but it's certainly thinner than some EDC knives I have and love. It cuts really, really well. I've put this through quite a bit of cardboard so far. I think the other day I had to break down like three big boxes um, and I went through all the tape and all that, but I also like broke them down into strips just to put some mileage on this knife and really feel for a small EDC knife, that's about as much as I'm going to ask of things as like hardcore cardboard processing. If it's a larger EDC knife or bordering on like an outdoor knife, then I'm going to be doing much harder core things. But for a knife like this, S90V is a fantastic steel. If what I'm asking for it is edge retention focused tasks, going through a lot of soft to medium material instead of a little very hard material, S90V is a great choice. It's not a very tough steel. So S90V is not a steel that I would ever pick for a knife that I'm going to come out and chop wood with. But for processing cardboard, going through tape and paper and stuff like that, it's going to be excellent at it. Um, even going through like zip ties and stuff, it's going to be plenty tough to go through that and it's going to hold its edge really well for a very long time. There is zero edge deformation on this knife. Like it still feels sticky sharp like it did out of the box. And like I said, I've gone through quite a bit of cardboard with it. Not like some of the testers who are specifically trying to get through an edge seeing how much they'll get through, but enough to feel out how this knife cuts and, and do what a realistic person is going to do with a knife like this. So excellent at cutting the way it is ground, the steel they selected, the finish on it, I'll add, is really, really nice. It's this like kind of finely stone washed. It's not like a rough stone washing, but it's like a nice fine stone washing over like a high shine satin. I'll wipe it off here so that it looks a little better for the camera, but it really, I like it quite a bit. One thing I'll say too, I don't know if it's because of the finish of this blade. I don't think I've owned any other Benchmade with this blade finish on it, but the etching where the butterfly is and on this side where it says S90V in first production, it seems like more faint, especially in some light. I, I think it must be because of, it's not like this is a knockoff Benchmade and I got one that's, I mean, it's it's the real thing, but it's it's harder to see the etching than it is on some other knives. And I think that's because of the kind of like glossy surface texture of this finish on the blade. I don't know, it's kind of cool to me. I don't dislike it. The last thing that I'm concerned about is how broadcasted that butterfly is. Like I'd be fine with it if the butterfly wasn't there. I know it's a Benchmade, uh, so take that for whatever you want to read into it but just something worth noting that it, it seems less stark the the billboarding the the type that they've put on there it seems less yeah less standout-ish english is not my thing today i'm so sorry guys anyway we've talked about blade we've talked about scales ergos pocket clip how it carries so I guess let's kind of wrap it up in some conclusions. Let me say my feelings about the knife. My feelings are this. I am genuinely impressed with it. The Super Freak, uh, my impression of that knife will forever be the second that I held one, the one that my buddy Kyle loaned to me, DTOM Knives and Gear, shout out to him. The second I pulled it out of the box and did my unboxing, I was smitten with it. And I finished the unboxing I asked him if I could buy the one that he sent to me. He said no. So I ordered one right then and there. It was a knife I felt like I needed to have. And I still feel like I need to have it. I sent it to a buddy to borrow yesterday and I'm going to miss it while it's gone. Like it's one of my favorite knives to rotate into my pocket. It's probably a good thing that it's gone for the moment because I have so much other stuff I need to be carrying to review. So it, a little less competition for those knives. But this knife, what I'm trying to get at, feels every bit as good to me if not even maybe a little bit more enhanced than the super freak like if you had to if you told me right now i could only keep this knife or the super freak the other one has to go you're standing on a bridge you gotta chuck one off to save your life i don't know what kind of circumstance that is but let's imagine i can only keep one i might keep this one <laughs> i'd have to think about it i really would it would probably, I don't know, like split split second decision, which one would I really keep? I think I would go with this one. 
And that's crazy because I love the Super Freak. Genuinely, it's a great knife. But this one, maybe it's because it's carbon. Maybe it's the finishing. I don't know. I Maybe it's because lately I'm loving secondary knives more than before. I, I really don't know, but I feel like my gut, realistically, if I could only choose one to keep and I had to let the other one go, I would keep this one. So read into that, whatever you will. I love the Super Freak and this is at least even with it, I might like it that little bit more, which is high praise for a knife <laughs> because it's it's never happened before that I borrowed a knife and ordered one the second that I checked it out because I just felt like I needed to have it and the Super Freak I did. So the fact that this is on par with that is a really good thing, especially I don't mean to be that guy. And I feel like sometimes I'm kind of mean, mean to Benchmade and I don't mean to be. There's plenty of Benchmades that I really like. And with every brand, there are knives that I don't like. I'm admittedly a Spyderco fanboy a lot of the time. There are knives Spyderco makes that I have no interest in and knives of theirs that I've tried that I can definitively say I didn't like weren't for me. But I feel like Benchmade, the ratio <laughs> isn't as good as some other players in the game. And sometimes it's just like, certain little things that I feel like they should be dialing in for the cost of their knives. They aren't quite there. Like some people say they always have every Benchmade they've ever gotten has poor QC and is off center and has bad action and blah, blah, blah. And other people say, I've never had that happen. And I'm not saying I believe or don't believe either of those, but I've had a good mix of both. I've had some knives come out of the box and be fantastic and need no adjustment and just be great. And I've had other knives that needed a lot of adjustment. This one was perfectly centered, but the action needed just a little dialing in to be how I wanted it. My Super Freak came out of the box way over tightened and just like, if it was a human who QC'd it, I don't know who puts a knife in a box that tight where the action doesn't operate the way it's supposed to. Like little things like that, I feel like are more common for me to experience from Benchmade and more of their models are just things that I'm not at all interested in. Like some of the stuff that they come out with is just too out there for me or uh, yeah I, i'm gonna stop with that line of thinking but with all of that said about benchmade and how much i think they can oftentimes fall short this one just nails it 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 does everything that i want out of a knife in this size and weight category and it does it really well i have awesome materials i have great ergos it carries very well it's nice and lightweight it's finished great it looks really cool to me it's this awesome like mixture of being like kind of gentlemanly materials while having these touches of red that make it kind of like tactical in a way and it's like it's cool it looks cool it's a very cool looking knife to me and the finishing they did on it really drives that home because the regular version of this knife the s30v1 with those black and gray handles i have zero interest in so the fact that they're able to take that platform and turn it into something that i love this much is really really good one thing i'll say as well because i just realized i didn't touch on it but the jimping on this knife is totally acceptable for me it's the liners have this little bit of jimping and it's nice and round it's not sharp in any direction it's up here as well and then a little bit on the spine and every bit of jimping on here feels fine to me i i guess i um, i think i actually do i think i slightly prefer that it's there when i really grip down on it and i feel that it's not uncomfortable jimping but it does give me a nice indexing spot and it, it really plants my fingers where they're supposed to be i like it it's good jimping and that's rare for me to say too so this is yeah of all the bench mates that i've checked out in the since i've had this channel um which would include the 940 i'm looking at right now um the contigo which i would never recommend the anthem which was super nice i would love to have an anthem the super freak I don't know if I'm forgetting anything else. There's gotta be. I've got the bailout, the bug out. I don't know. Of all of the Benchmades that I've checked out, the one I'd recommend the most to the broadest audience is probably the bug out because that's like the most approachable, both in terms of price and comfort in pocket and blade length and all that. But to like other knife guys, 
to not just like general public, like what knife should I buy, but to other knife guys who appreciate knives like I appreciate knives, this is the Benchmade I'd recommend the most. Sincerely. It's, I, yeah, if this is a design that you think you like, I wouldn't hesitate at all to recommend that you move forward with it and get one because it's so great. It just really comes together in such an excellent way. So this has been plenty of rambling, but this is my full review. I don't know if I forgot anything. I probably did. This is real off the cuff and I'm struggling today. So thank you to all of you who watched all the way through this, but this is the mini freak dash one, as I call it. I don't know. I feel like someone might've commented on my last video that there's a nickname going around for it because there's already a mini freak. I'm calling it the mini freak dash one or the carbon fiber mini freak S90 V mini freak. Anyways, it's the mini freak five. 65 right 565 dash one carbon fiber s90v red hardware with a mini deep carry clip that i added and that's what you're gonna get today because that's what i'm that's what i'm capable of at the moment but it's a rad knife i genuinely really really like this offering from benchmade i think it is probably my current favorite so take that for what it's worth there it is